So today we're going to talk about all things clipping diodes. So most of you will be familiar with what clipping is on a broader term. Pretty much every guitarist has used some kind of pedal or amp that will clip their signal. But for those that don't, in a nutshell, it's basically when you take a nice smooth sine wave, which would be a perfectly clean guitar signal, for example, and you start chopping away at the top and bottom of that sine wave. Clipping is also what's broadly known as distortion. I won't go all the way back to the beginning uh, and give you the full backstory of distortion and guitars because we'd be here all day. But it kind of goes back to like the early rock and roll years where people would turn up guitar amps super loud and they'd basically break up because they were being pushed past their limits. The tubes were you know, working harder really than they should be. Um, and the guitar signal would break up and that's what kind of became known as that early rock and roll sound. Obviously, playing amps loud is fun, but it's not practical for a lot of people, which is why a lot of amps now have more gain staging built into the preamp or some Marshall amps, for example, also have clipping sections put in, which we're about to talk about. And then obviously you have pedals. Pedals are a perfect way of creating a distorted sound at any volume that you want. And a very common way of adding clipping or distortion into pedals is by using clipping diodes. There are three main things that we're gonna look at in this video, and that is forward voltage of a diode, symmetrical versus asymmetrical clipping, and hard clipping versus soft clipping. So let's dive straight into forward voltage. A typical guitar signal, depending on what pickups you're using and how hard or soft you're playing, can range between about one and four volts. And for this example, we're running into a, a perfectly clean, wide open amp. There's no distortion or anything going along. It's as, it's as clean as it can be. So what happens when you have a circuit that has clipping diodes in it that's stuck between your guitar and your amp is the diodes that are used for clipping have a lower voltage than what your guitar signal is putting out. So for simplicity's sake, let's just say that your guitar signal is putting out three volts, but the diodes that have been used in this circuit, their forward voltage is 1.5. Your signal is gonna peak that quite easily. Obviously here, I'm ignoring many other variables like any other pedals in your chain or the rest of the circuit that those clipping diodes are, are built around. But this is just to give you a, a broad overview of what they do. So there are typically three types of diodes that are commonly used in guitar pedals for clipping and they are germanium diodes, silicon diodes and LEDs. Though you can also use other components like transistors and MOSFETs if you configure them correctly. They can also be used as clipping diodes. Germaniums have the lowest forward voltage, typically around 0.3, so very low. Silicons obviously vary widely because there's so many, but around the 0.7 kind of mark. And then your typical red LED can be somewhere around 1.5 to 2. The best way I can try and describe it is that if you imagine a perfectly clean sine wave that's coming up the full length of this video screen, and then the thresholds for the diodes are represented by two flat lines on both the positive and negative peak, where you've got the zero point right in the middle. The red LED at 1.5 could look something like this. The silicon at 0.7 could look something like this. And the germanium could look something like this all the way down there at 0.3. So in practical terms, what does this mean? Well, it means the lower the forward voltage, the more compression, distortion you're gonna get on that signal and also the lower output volume you're gonna get the other side. So many of you that are aware of our pedals will be familiar with our fondness of clipping diodes in that we have rotary switches on almost all of our pedals to give the user some different options to switch between. And that's what we're gonna take a look at right now with the American Geek. So the American Geek, as you're probably aware, is a Big Muff based circuit. So the Big Muff circuit actually has two sets of clipping diodes, um, but most Big Muff based circuits to let you swap diodes will be looking at the second stage is that's the one that makes the more drastic difference to the sound. So what you can switch between on this current version of the American Geek is germanium, silicon, red LED, MOSFET, transistor, and then no diodes. So let's have a listen.
Next up, we are going to talk about symmetrical versus asymmetrical clipping. So symmetrical clipping basically means that you've got the same forward voltage or the same diode at either side, whether it be one or two of each side, but they're facing opposite directions and they're clipping the signal on the positive side and the negative side of the sine wave evenly. Asymmetrical clipping basically means that you throw that balance off and that can be done one of two ways. One way of doing it is to simply put another diode on one side in series with the first diode. And what happens when you put diodes in series is that their forward voltage adds up. So if you go back to our germanium diodes that had a forward voltage of 0.3, if you put two of those in series, their effective forward voltage would be 0.6. Three in a row would be 0.9 and so on. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it would be to still just have one of each diode, for example, but make one of them a red LED and the other germanium. So the forward voltages are different there, so the balance is thrown off and therefore the sine wave isn't being clipped symmetrically. This type of clipping is commonly used in a lot of hard clipping diode circuits, which we'll come on to in a minute. Famous hard clipping diode circuits would be things like the Proco RAT or the MXR Distortion Plus or the DOD250 because those last two are basically the same circuit. And I just so happened to have a PCB lying around that was based on the MXR Distortion Plus. So what I've done is built one, hooked up a switch where I'm gonna flick between the diodes removed from the circuit so you can hear what the straight op amp distortion sounds like. And then we are gonna go through the symmetrical on one side and the asymmetrical on the other side of the switch and you can hear the difference. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is soft clipping versus hard clipping. So hard clipping, as I've already mentioned, is pedals like the Proco Rat and the Distortion Plus. And the term hard clipping you've probably heard before. It's often spoken about when dealing with digital distortion, which can be pretty harsh and ugly. I'll put something over my voice now that boosts the volume so that it peaks it and you'll hear how disgusting this sounds. In practical terms in a guitar pedal it's a very aggressive form of clipping and what it normally means is that you have the signal coming along and then you have the diodes tied to ground so basically anything that peaks that voltage that we spoke about before gets sent straight to ground. That creates a very hard cut off on the sine wave. So what happens in a soft clipping overdrive circuit is that they're normally op amp based overdrives and you'll take the clipping diodes and instead of them going straight to ground they'll be put in the feedback path of an op amp and what that does is instead of giving a really harsh flat peak to the top of the waveform it kind of smooths out that edge so it kind of reaches up to that point more gradually and obviously still clips but it's in a much softer and what some people refer to as a tube like way. Undoubtedly the most famous soft clipping circuit has got to be the Ibanez Tube Screamer which I don't have but you'll have all heard before. But what I do happen to have is the Honey Burst Overdrive from my good friend Adam at Chevtone FX. So this is a soft clipping overdrive circuit really really nice you should go and check out his stuff if you're not familiar with him and what we're going to do is compare that to my surplus elemental overdrive pedal which is a got a similar kind of gain range but the diodes in the surplus are hard clipping i'll preface all of this and i should have said this at the start really but this isn't meant to be a comparison video there are obviously other variables i'm not considering here this is just a broad overview so let's have a listen
and I thought I'd just throw that little bit in the end there where they're both stacked because it sounded pretty good. Thank you so much as always for watching. Hope that you enjoyed this video, even though it's a, you know maybe a little bit more technical than just you know, demos or whatever, but hopefully you enjoyed it nonetheless. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. As always, please head over to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and check out our social media pages. And we'll see you next time.